Hello everybody, this is lesson 2.3, Measuring Change. Let's go ahead and read the specific objectives. In this lesson, students will understand that a relative change is different from absolute change. A relative measure is always a comparison of two numbers. Students will be able to calculate relative change and explain the difference between relative change and an absolute change. So from this, uh, from these objectives, you see that we'll be discussing the idea of change and how we can measure it. We're going to begin with the first problem situation that's talking about the salary increases. So we have a, a company called Flex Corp and the table shows us the salary increases uh, from 2013 to 2014. So the first question is asking us just to calculate the rates. How much money did each person increase in the salary from 2013 to 2014? All right, we don't really need to review this as it's just uh, you know, asking to find the difference. But what I would like to say is that what we're calculating right now has a specific name, all right? So you do the subtraction, right? So Maria is getting $30,000 rate. You just subtract the two numbers. Peter is get, getting $24,000 change, $24,000 raise, and Lawrence is getting $12,000 raise. Okay? When you take the salary that it is in uh, kind of like future minus the salary, well, not the future, We're gonna, we can call the year that is in future. It's kind of like a present year, even though this happened in the past. But when there's a change, there's a time that we're living right now, the present time. And then there's also a past. So I like to describe the difference between uh, present and uh, past or the what it is now minus the original. Either way, that term that you subtract the two numbers is called the absolute change. So this is the term right here that's presented in this paragraph. So the raise calculated above each represent the absolute change in the employee salaries. The absolute change is the total amount of, ch of change between the two numbers. In the event of the increase, the absolute change is positive. In the event of decrease, the absolute uh, change is negative. So it is important to kind of um, uh, remember that the order matters. So when we talk about absolute change, I will use this term. I'll use this abbreviation now minus the past. All right, you just subtract into numbers. And if there is a decrease, then not going to be negative. All right, so calculating the change is not a problem. We understand what it means when something is going up or go, going down, but sometimes it might be insufficient, not enough to describe a change. So that's what we're getting to the, to the next question. At first, Maria was pleased with her raise, but when uh, she learned the amounts of her colleagues' raises, she went to see uh, to see the CEO of the company and complained that the amount of her raise was too low compared to others. What mathematical justification might Maria have for arguing that her raise was too low? So how come Maria, who got the highest absolute change, is unhappy and saying that it was not fair. So can you think of a reason? Alrighty, so let's go ahead and review. So there is another idea of calculating the change and that is what we call a relative change. Also known as percent change. And it is measured as, so how does it measure it? It's basically measured as the absolute change, so now minus the past. And then you relatively calculate how does that difference compares to the past value. Because every time you want to calculate some kind of change as a percentage, you want to compare it as a fraction of what? And it's always the fraction of the original salary. OK, 
Okay, so sometimes instead of past, you can say original. Now minus original divided by the original. And then because we uh, talk about this as a percent for most part, we're going to multiply that ratio by 100. So let's go ahead and calculate the relative change for each of the people presented here. All right. So now look, we already calculated the absolute change. So to calculate the relative change, we're going to take the difference that we got for each. And we're going to divide it by the original salary, not the present salary, but the past. Okay, so we take $30,000 and we divide it by $200,000. And we convert this into a percent. We can get rid of this. 30 divided by 200 is going to reduce to 0.15. Multiply by 100 will give us 15% increase. You see, 15% increase is what Maria got. Her salary is the, was the largest to begin with. So the $30,000 increase on her large salary ended up being 15%. Now we're going to do the same thing for Peter and Lawrence. For the Peter, the percent change or the relative change is 24,000 on the salary was significantly lower than uh, Maria's was 120. Just be careful, okay? You divide it first and then you multiply it by 100, okay? So we get 24 divided by 120 is 0.2 multiplied by 100 gives us 20%. And finally, for Lawrence, he had the lowest salary to begin with, and his increase was $12,000 on a salary of $60,000. And that changes also 20%. So now, do you see the justification of while Maria might be unhappy? Her relative change was lower than the other two okay so now uh, if we were to use the 15% change and if Maria were to receive the same rate as the others in other words if she were to get 20% raise then what should her salary be uh, then all right so go ahead and calculate that I'll give you a moment all right so let's review it so her salary was 20 $200,000, we increase it by 20%. Notice we do this very often. All right, so I'm going to write it like this. So it's 200,000, and then we'll multiply it by 0 0.2, the 20% as a decimal, multiplied by 200,000. So that would be, this will be 40,000. So her salary should be 240 if she were to get the same raise, right? The other way you could have also gotten this using sort of ideas from less than I think 1.3 is to multiply by 1.2 immediately because 20% increase means she's getting a rate of 20% plus 100%, which will be 120. So it's 1.2. All right, so here we're looking at the other situation where the relative change and an absolute change can play a role. So these are the table of stock of or share prices for, actually there are four stocks here, not three, uh, Google, Microsoft, Best Buy, and Facebook. The Google has renamed its stock since uh, that period of time to Alphabet, but doesn't matter. They're going to use those four companies, the largest companies in the United States and in the world. And we're going to see uh, what can we say about the stock performance. Now, what is a, a share? It's basically a piece of a company. So a company uh, value is getting divided into shares. And as a shareholder, you can buy a piece of a company. Actually, you can buy even a, a dollar amount of the stock now, which will be a small, tiny decimal of each share. All right, but the way it's priced, it's priced for that one share. How much does one share of a company is worth? Now the numbers are much higher than they were, you know, 10 years ago. But again, we're going to use those numbers to analyze our 
you know, um, situation right here. So question four is asking us to rank from the best to the worst the 2013 performance of the stock. So it's basically year 2013. It started on January 1st of 2013. And we go all the way to December 31st of 2013. So all of these stocks increased. All right. And when we say 350, for example, per Google, it means $350 per one share. That's a cost of one share. And then it became 559 per one share. So by just looking at these stocks, all right, and the numbers, can you say which one performed best? Second best, third best, and last, the worst, just rank them. Just rank them. And then select your reasoning. You know, why? Why do you think uh, you made that list? So I'll give you a moment. Alrighty, so you might have said Google was the best performing as it is the most expensive. Now, having an expensive stock does not necessarily mean that a company did the best over the course of the year. Expensive stock is an indication that the company is worth a lot and uh, it's a it's a strong company but not necessarily that its performance is necessarily better than the others so just by looking at the dollar amount it's not really telling us much so if you calculate the absolute change just find the difference that dollar amount does not mean anything all right so if you already were thinking about the relative change and calculated which stock had the most percent increase and that will get you to the answer. But in order for us to understand this better, we're going to do the following. We're going to take $20,000 and we're going to invest uh, in the beginning of 20, uh, in 2013. And if you choose two of the above four stocks in which to invest, we're going to split 10000 among the two of them and then we will um, compare. So here I would like for what I would like you to do. Let's take Google which has the highest number per share. And let's uh, take Best Buy as being the lowest costly stock in at the beginning of the year. And let's just do this. So let's go ahead and I'll give you a moment. Invest $10,000 into Google. The cost of the stock is $350 per share. And I would like to ask you first, all right, how many shares is this? How many shares can you buy with $10,000? Assume you bought it at the beginning of that year. How many shares did you buy? I'll give you a moment. All right, let's review. To find out how many shares, you're going to take $10,000 and you're going to divide it by 350 per one share. And that will give you the number of shares. And the number would be... 10,000 divided by 350 so that give us 28.57 shares and for the sake of you know the, the reality at this point in time and it's actually happened quite a few years ago you are able to buy a decimal number of shares so it's okay to buy for example 0.57 so we're gonna just round it to two places let's leave it at that all right, so it's 28.57 shares. That's how much you have in your portfolio. All right, so you wait a year, and then what we're gonna do, we're gonna sell it. Sell 28.57 shares, sell them at a higher price. It's kind of like we're doing cryptocurrency. For the next iteration of this uh, uh, curriculum, we're probably gonna change that from stocks to coins but that's kind of the same idea you buy coins and then you sell them hoping that it's going to rise in price it's the same exact concept all right so let's sell them so then sell it at the higher price so we're selling what google uh at 559 the difference between stock and coins is that stocks uh you can predict somewhat of how they perform based on companies disclosures while the cryptocurrency is very unpredictable so here we go we're going to take 2857 shares and going to sell them at 559 per share i'll give you a moment to calculate how much money you will get around to the nearest dollar all right let's review it 
So if one share costs 559 and you have that many shares, to figure out the cost of how much money you're going to collect, you're going to multiply those two numbers. So we're going to take 28.57 and we sell at 559. We're getting $15,000, 971. I rounded to the nearest dollar. That gives us the profit of what? Well, you started with 10,000 and you added up with 15,000. So the difference is $5,971. Profit is the amount of money that you actually earn. Earn. So you earn $5,000. 5971 Almost $6,000 from that investment. Now, I'm going to ask you to repeat the same calculation and figure out how much profit are you going to get from investing $10,000 in Best Buy. And I'll give you a moment to do so, and I'll write it um, there on top. Okay? All right, so let's review it. So you're going to take $10,000, and you're going to invest it into Best Buy, at $11 per share, correct? So we're going to divide this at $11, and we're going to get lots and lots and lots of shares with $10,000. It's like you're getting the coins. So you got 909.09. .09. Let's round to the two places. Shares. And then you're going to sell them at a higher price. At forty dollars per share. Okay, so let's multiply it by forty. You can actually leave the answer in your calculator. It's already it displayed on my screen. I'm just gonna multiply it by forty to get a more accurate number. So look at the amount of money we're going to collect: thirty-six thousand three hundred and sixty-four dollars from selling those, making a profit which will be the difference between what we start and what we made of, look at this number, 36, 36,364 minus 10,000 give us, you subtract, $26,364 in profit. So that means that Best Buy is much better investment based on the numbers from that year. It's not necessarily the same right now. You can check this out. All right, so now you can see how the it works in terms of selling it. Now, when it comes to uh, looking at those two, the Google and Best Buy, was there any other quicker way that we could compare this? And the answer is yes. Well, we can also do this, and that's what the question is asking us, how much can you mathematically compare Best Buy to Google? What you could calculate is the relative change. So check this out. If you calculate the relative change, How does this work? Let's do this together for Google. So for Google is you're going to take 559, you're going to subtract 350, and you're going to divide this by 350. You got to divide it by the uh, past, and then you multiply this by 100. You understand? You subtract first, and then you divide second. Make sure you follow along. So take 559, Take away 350, that gives us 209. Divided by 350 second. Do not do, you know, uh, do not do uh, several calculations at once. Do it one step at a time. You do the numerator first. You got 209 divided by 350 and then multiply by 100 and then give us 59.7%. Point seven percent. So that's the relative change for uh, Google, while Best Buy. Check out the Best Buy when we do the relative change. I'm going to give you a moment to calculate it first, and now let's review. So it's going to be forty take away eleven divided by eleven. And then you multiply by 100%. So that's going to be $29 divided by 11. All right. 
divided by 11 and then multiply by 100. Oh, I, got, I lost it. Let me do it again. 29 divided by 11 multiplied by 100. It's a whooping 263.6% increase. I'm using one decimal place. So that's for the Best Buy. Whoa. This is so much better. If you compare this relative change to that relative change, if you divide them to compare it, and I'm going to divide a larger number by a smaller number to see how many times that's better, 263.6 divided by 57.9 is 4.55 times as much. So how would you mathematically compare? We can divide this and say that, you know, the rate of profit from 1 which is, what is it, 263.6% divided by, what's the rate for Google, 57.9% is 4.55 times better for Best Buy because it gives us such a better return. And you know what's interesting? Check this out. Take the profit from, uh, uh, what is it, from uh, Best Buy and divide it by the profit from investing 10000 into Google. Check this out. Divide those two numbers. 26,364 divided by 5,961 and you get the same answer, about. So it's 4.4. The reason why it's not exact because we did some rounding. But the idea is in order to determine the performance of something relatively to what it was in the past, the percent change gives us more information and it is more reliable. That's why when you read, you know, uh, you know how the Bitcoin is rising or any other cryptocurrency or the stocks, you want to know the percent, the percent, the higher the percent the more returns you will get. And once again, the topic of this class is a relative change versus the absolute change. And the relative change is the you subtract and you dividing by the past. And then you multiply by 100. And that's our last question for, for this lesson. It's asking us to calculate, well, we have three countries, India, uh, United States, Japan. GDP is a gross domestic product. It's given in billions of dollars. I know some of you sometimes ignore the fact that you have billions or some other units. Billions, you mean you have nine additional zeros added to it. For example, for the United States in 2010, that number was 14, 9, 4, 5, and then billions like this. You see, six addi I mean, nine additional zeros making United States GDP in trillions of dollars. Right now, by the way, it's more than 24. Um, in the year 2021, it's the highest GDP of all the nation in the world. Okay, 14.9 was 10 years, well, 11 years ago. Now it's much higher. So uh, that's a GDP, the gross domestic product. So that's the same term of like you think about like income of a country. So it's how much money uh, United States collect from taxes, from trading, and all the other things that is done uh, financially. All right, so it's asking us for question four. Estimate which country above represents the largest absolute change and which country witnessed the greatest relative change. So it basically compares year 2000 to the year 2010. It's actually interesting to see how it compares to the, uh, the next 10 years from 2010 to 2020. I believe there was a higher uh, increase for the uh, in that 10 years, at least for the United States and also probably for other countries. So, um, but we're going to use those years, all righty. So let's go ahead and it says estimate. It's okay. I don't really mind to, to just calculate. Let's just do exact calculation. So go ahead and just calculate the absolute change and calculate the relative change of each country. And I'm going to ask you to, uh, you know, choose some of the answers on, um, um, on add puzzle. So uh, let's go, let's do this. Alrighty. Let's review. So the numbers right here were gotten by subtracting. 
the 2010 minus 2000, all of this in billions of dollars. So it's okay to leave it like that. Alrighty. Now to calculate the relative change, you're going to take this difference that you found, okay, and you're going to divide it by the past number, not by the pre by the, the later number, the earlier number. So take those and divide. Because when you're finding, you know, uh, what is it? Now minus the past divided by the past, this is equivalent as using the uh, absolute change and then dividing it by the past. That's the same idea, all right? And then don't forget to multiply by 100 uh, percent by 100 to convert it into percent okay so let's do that so here are the numbers for the relative changes okay so for example for the US what you what I did is just take the 2263 the difference and divided by 12682 multiplied by 100 and that's where the 17.8 percent is coming from all right, so as you can see, the United States had the largest dollar increase in the GDP because it was already, you know, making lots of money to begin with. So the difference is also the largest. However, the relative change is not the highest for the United States and India is a much higher change. And then part of it is because it started with a much lower amount. Okay, so when we're talking about which of the countries like economies grew the fastest, which one would you and versus which one grew the most? Uh, these are the terms that we use. So which one do you think uh, grew the fastest? Choose an answer. All right, so the fastest re refers to the percent. Okay, so when we say the faster, that means, the, you know, the more rapidly. So we're talking about the relative rate. And that would be India of, of all these three countries. And which of the countries do you think grew the most? All right, so here we say the US because it grew the most in terms of the dollar amounts uh, correct it's 2263 uh, billion people a billion dollars which is the most in terms of the numerical number and then the last question is asking you to make the prediction for 2020 and justify your answer in a complete ses in a sentence using the precise mathematical terminology so if you want to predict what would you do let me give you a moment. Are you going to use a percent or are you going to be using uh, the dollar amount? Okay, so the percent is more logical to use because that's telling us about a relative growth to what it is, you know, in now and how much it's going to change in the future. So if we use India's uh, percentage, so it's 97.3 of what it was in 2010 year. So that is what? So 2010 year, India was 1365. And then, uh, so let's find what that is. So we're going to multiply 0 0.973 times 1365. 0.973 times 1365 so that gives us 1328 let's leave it rounded to the nearest number so that's increase since that's how much it's going to increase by we're going to add and uh, to what it started with okay in 2010 so we're going to add 1365 and we predict that it's going to be 2293 billion dollars. All right, which is um 2693 123 123 123 so it's actually 2.693 trillion dollars in 2020. And you can go ahead and compare how does that fit with the reality? And on that, we're going to finish the lesson.